Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Mattel Masters of the Universe Origins cartoon collection He-Man, Beast-Man, Skeletor, and Man-at-Arms. Yeah, I know, this is a bit out of my wheelhouse. I don't do a lot of Masters reviews, but... Oh, it is so near and dear. It's my childhood. My mom would pick us up from school early just to get home in time to be able to watch Masters of the Universe every afternoon. Well, okay, it also helped her to avoid the after-school traffic, but at the same time, hey. And if I did the intro correct, you see that I have quite a bit of He-Man product. But like I said, the Filmation series from the 80s, that's my He-Man. That is my Masters of the Universe. So you make something that is both nostalgic and looks good, I'm gonna give it a shot. Now, He-Man and Beast-Man have been out for a little bit, so I'm kinda behind the curve there, but Skeletor and Man-at-Arms are fairly new. So I figured I'd do all four at the same time. What's probably gonna happen is I'm gonna open up He-Man, and that's gonna give us an idea of articulation, body sculpt, and everything for the other three figures. So this is mostly a He-Man review, but then the other three trailing behind, like, hey, Here's that He-Man body again, just with Skeletor parts on it. The basis of Masters of the Universe action figure lines. Sexy new packaging with the logo up top, that blue kind of star field, the purples and everything, right above Castle Grayskull. You can't get more Masters than that. I love that the art on the back of the package calls out which episode the figure, or well, I should say the accessories are based on. It's been a while. I need a refresher. I need a reminder, and just seeing these just brings those episodes back to my brain. They're living somewhere back here but you point it out and it's like oh hello remember me hey there's ram man can we get him in this line the american versions of the card backs call out the special filmation accessories the stasis ray the masks of power but the beast man and he man i got are international versions so they don't have words well they do have words just didn't put the labels down under the pictures it doesn't say that that's the sword of the ancients or that that's the hover ray. What's neat is that Man-at-Arms and Beast-Man's accessories are both based on the dragon invasion. If you're wanting to go back, do some research, it's just one episode, while He-Man and Skeletor are from Masks of Power. There's some continuity there. The cross cells look amazing, and if I stopped here, I'd be pretty happy because I have everything on the car back. One thing I will point out, I posted pictures on my socials. Beast-Man I got from Amazon, and Right out of the box, the blister was off the card back, and I was like, Amazon, why are you treating my precious toys like this, even though I'm gonna open them myself? Turns out it's a Mattel problem. The glue on the bubbles are not great, because Man at Arms I got from Big Bad Toy Store, and he's mostly off the card back too. He's just holding on by a thread. This was loose banging around in a box that's too big for it, while Man at Arms was bubble wrapped in a more appropriate size box. And still, the bubble, so that's a Mattel thing. That's a manufacturing problem. <laughs> Well, I say that, we're opening He-Man first, get an idea of the body and everything, but that bubble is nicely glued. So maybe it's a different... Wait, is this the international version? Well, okay, so is the other one. That doesn't matter. Oops. <laughs> Come here. I don't collect Origins, so I'm not familiar with the pop apartness. This doesn't really do anything for me, because I'm not interested in taking parts from one figure, swapping them onto another. The mini comic, since this is the international version, they didn't put word balloons in here either, just kind of on your own. I mean, it's not a complicated story, but it does look like they veered away from the episode story. Instead of two random people showing up at Skeletor's doorstep to go get the Masks of Power, uh, they just throw it on Beast Man and he becomes Demos, Demos, whatever that guy's name was. Beast Man wages war, He Man talks to Stratos, there's the hover ray. <laughs> they even work this back into here. Here comes the Sword of the Ancients. Pick it up. No, Beast Man, you can't have it. He Man gets it and it merges with the Power Sword like it did in the episode. <laughs> Ooh, Rotan, I forgot that's in Origins. Now, when I started talking about having an interest in this line, a lot of people pointed out that these were gonna be bigger than Origins. When I got this out of the shipping box, I thought, it doesn't look that much bigger, 
because it's packed with the knees bent. And like that, it has a very vintage feel, but once you get it out of the package, you can straighten the legs out and it comes down and oh man, I, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Origins proportions or the vintage line, but doing this and bringing the arms down and straightening those out too, it does a lot to modernize the overall feel. It still has this super buffness up here, but man, what a difference straight legs will make. No, it's not super realistic. It's not meant to be exact human anatomy. But as far as He-Man figures go, based on the filmation line with some vintage figure flair, <laughs> I really like this. It has a nice tan skin tone to it with a semi-gloss sheen, which is a nice contrast to the metallicness of the cross armor chest. Thing. have the sword sheath on the back that is very reminiscent of the cartoon. When I was a kid, I didn't realize that the studs here and here didn't really match the cartoon, but now that we have several figures based on that, that didn't do that, that smooths it out, I go back to those episodes and think, wow, how did I never have a problem with that? Oh, because I was a kid and I was playing with toys. It, it wasn't that big a deal. Saying that, I think one of the big draws here is that it does evoke those figures from the 80s while being more accurate to what we saw on the TV. But if you had handed me this back in the day, even though I was happy with what I had, this would have been even better. This would have made me even happier. Just look at that head sculpt, that hair, that is the cartoon. But then you get to the boots and it is vintage toy-like because in the cartoon, the boots were smooth too, under the fur cuffs. Prince Adam is essentially the only Origins figure I have, and it's not reuse, so them putting those straps on there, I don't know if that was on purpose. Maybe I'm missing something. It's a callback to something else I don't remember. And while I have Adam out, just look at the size difference and the shape of everything. Again, I don't collect Origins, but from what I've heard, this is a completely new sculpt. And now that I have them side by side, I can confirm, I will agree, this is a completely new body. I don't know what this is either. It was on there when I bought it at the secondhand store. I will say this overlay piece, it does like to get squirrely if you're posing around. Well, now you're locked on, of course, diva figures. But that's just another callback to my youth because I couldn't keep those on there when I was a kid either. It would always pop out and you'd have to do that pinch thing and pull and push and try to keep it on there. And then once you did, it was like, okay, Gotta be gentle with it. Let's not get that thing all wrangled up. Articulation wise, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck going back and forth and side to side. That allows for some shift. If you kick it back, can look up and then go forward, there is a little down. Not bad tilt at all, even with the hair. Hey, I bet. Then of course, left and right. Pin coming out to the shoulder, and this is something I'm getting used to. The socket actually goes down. When you're rotating, you have to kind of Get the hinge going too. Rotates around and like I said, it goes over. Oh, huh, that's neat. Then all the way around with a hinge on the outside goes to there. Hinge and swivel at the elbow doesn't make 90 because of, look at that, that's He-Man's bicep. Swivels in and out. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. And I feel like every He-Man should have an up-down hinge. It's a weapon-wielding hand. His most iconic pose is holding a sword over his head. And with that socket doing that, oh man, it looks good, but you can't. Mm. Swivel at the waist, ball coming out to the hip, swings forward, swings back, hinges out. Hinges swivel at the knee, goes up to almost 90 and gives a little swivel. Cut at the boot, hinge at the ankle, goes back, goes forward. That's better than a lot of Marvel Legends. And then forward facing pin for rocker. Comes with the Sword of the Ancients, has a very nice sculpt to it and a metallic finish. And that same metallicness applies to the power sword too. That looks really good, dang it. It gets a little tight there, but maybe they do that on purpose so it doesn't fall out in case you're throwing it in tubs or toy boxes or across the room. That is super tight. 
Oh, okay. You can take the sheath off. I was wondering about that. Let go of my power sword. I wish this was a round peg because sometimes when He-Man was walking away from the camera, it was like this. So it'd be neat to have that option. That peg's in super secure though. Easy peasy to put in his hand too. And I like that it looks like the sword has some weight to it, some heft, some size. It's bigger than a lot of power swords that we get. Well, at least compared to the figures they come with. Does that make any sense? Dang, that looks good. This He-Man stands at, oh, six and a 16th inches tall, which again is taller than your average Origins figure. I'm assuming this is your average Origins figure. Putting He-Man next to some of my other favorite lines like Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe, and Star Wars Black series, even though the figure is six inches tall, this is not 1 12th scale. Well, okay, Marvel Legends and G.I. Joe are slightly larger larger than 1 12th. Star Wars is about true 1 12th, but it's still short. I don't know if I'd call this 5.5 because I don't know a lot of 5.5 lines. I'm just going to call this He-Man scaled. It's He-Man scaled. Then here he is next to the Masterverse 40th anniversary He-Man, the Super 7 Club Skull He-Man based on the filmation look. Masters of the Universe Classics He-Man. See what I mean? This is the Club Skull power sword and it's a little longer but not quite as thick. The heads are similar sizes too. This is the Super 7, this is the new Mattel. Well okay, the skin tones don't match. It'd take a little bit of paint and some dremeling to get this to fit down on the ball joint, but if you wanted to get an extra one of these and make a filmation faker, I don't think I'd have a problem with that. Look at this beast man. This is the one that caught my eye back at San Diego Comic Con. This is the one that made me go, well, maybe I need a new filmation based vintage figure inspired line. It is so nostalgic. The body is He-Man again, and we're gonna say that two more times. Other action figures of beast man would have had a fur sculpt on it, but this is based on the original cartoon and he didn't have that. Have the red bracers, have the yellow belt, the blue fur, down. oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> this is not He-Man's boots. Out of the four I have, these are the only ones that are just plain boots. Have the overlays around the bicep, and because of those, you're not gonna be able to get the arm down to the side unless you do some finagling, unless you do some moving around, get it down around the bicep maybe, and even then, it is going to hold it off a little bit. They have it on the back of the package. It's mid to high bicep, maybe right there, but I also don't mind it being all the way up here. On the outside, there's the upward pointing spikes. On the chest gear, it has that furry look to it. Not too detailed. Got to keep with the cartoon look. And then the blue star in the middle. Straps going around to the back. And there is our vintage toy clasp thing. I have not had this come out yet. Wait a second, I just had a brain flash. As a kid, you'd get them out of the package, and the first time you'd take them off, that's when it would start, wouldn't it? It's almost weakened or stretched the material a little bit. So I'm not gonna mess with that, because I'm never gonna take this off. There is some hollowness on the back of the collar, just to save material, I guess. It looks good from here. Then there's the head sculpt. Beast Man is angry. Skeletor! The eyes stand out nicely, especially with the blue underneath, but then there's a lighter orange to the I guess that's gonna be skin poking out here and at the ears. And that's probably my only problem with this figure. The colors aren't as saturated as I remember from the cartoon. I feel like the orange of the skin should be deeper, darker, and then the lighter orange around the eyes should be lighter, just to add some contrast. Cause as is, you get back from it a little bit and it all bleeds to get, well, okay, I can't say that. I mean, we're only dealing with a certain number of colors here. If I could change just one color, it would be the orange of the body. Just darken it slightly. Oh, and another thing, I always think of Beastman as hunched a little bit, but with no ab crunch, you can kind of bring this forward at the legs and have him leaning forward, but it's not a crunch, you know? It should be straight and then, er. but that's not this toy line. That's not what this is meant to be. This is meant to be origin style with filmation style. I said style too many times, I screwed myself up. Accessories, he comes with his standard whip. It seems like they do this every time <laughs> with some kind of traffic cone handle thing with a string up top. You can't hold it by the actual grip. It's more of a 
grab the handle thing and even then you gotta twist it up and around, almost like that. <laughs> that takes me back. Then there is the Filmation style hover ray. I'm gonna say nice details. Yes, it's simplistic, but that's the basis for this line. We know the size, we know the articulation, so we're jumping straight to comparison. Here is the Masterverse New Eternia Beastman, the Club Grayskull Beastman, and then the Masters of the Universe Classics Beastman. Well, I was talking shit about the whips, huh? There's a handle, and there's a handle, and there's a handle. So I, apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. But the Club Grayskull Beastman can get hunchy. He can crunch over a little bit, so it feels more filmation-y. In fact, if you're wanting straight up filmation looks, I'm starting to think that you need to go with Club Grayskull, but woo, that's expensive. Skeletor comes with a different mini comic inside and it looks like this is gonna be the one that's shared with Man at Arms because he appears too. But this one also works in the Masks of Power and then comes down and around and Skeletor takes some kind of power and he has the purple version of the Power Sword, which I didn't know this figure came with, so that was a nice surprise. But then there's also dragons and I haven't noticed the Stasis Ray, but eh. There's Man at Arms. There's all the figures we have so far. And look at Skeletor, that blue works so well with this pale purple. A lot of times we get a really deep purple. <laughs> this, oh, it's so nice. It's almost pastel-y. Again, the same base body, have the musculature up underneath, the big old biceps, no bracers this time. The clean belt, the furry shorts, and then blue legs, muscles, down to here where we get new boots again. That's the nice thing about these being separate. They can just slam on any boot and they have a new character. Well, it takes more than that. Again, the Skeletor loincloth with the three flaps hanging down, the studs on the ends, and oh, there's no latch. And it's the same with his chest gear. I would have thought it'd have the, you know, loops, the latches right here, but it just has one plug. That comes around to the shoulder flaps, again with the studs, and the crossbones on front. So, so Skeletor. Well, I mean, besides this. <laughs> the hooded skull. And again, this does a good job of just mixing the cartoon and the figure because I mean, in the cartoon, there wasn't any blue skin showing right there, but you get to toy form, there has to be concessions made. I will say that mm, this isn't the most filmation accurate skull I've ever seen. I don't know what it is. Maybe it should be deeper within the hood or the shape of it. Also, I wish that yellow was a little bit darker, a little bit deeper, kind of like Beast Man's skin. Because as is, you get back a little bit, and it's not just because of my bright lights, you lose the teeth and some of the detail to the bone. I do like the black in the eye sockets though, making it look infinite, like deep, dark recesses. And then the nose and the sides of the mouth are painted black too, which makes me think, maybe it should be black here just to give it a little more depth. Just some nitpicks that I noticed as I got it out of the package, but otherwise, again, I am loving the proportions on these. It's very recognizable, but updated. Almost like it throws me back to being eight, nine years old, messing with the original figures. Now that I'm older, I'm messing with a more 2020 type style while still calling back to the 80s. It's so confusing to my brain. These flappies are soft if you want to bring his arm up and around. And this is also soft too, to not get in the way of legs. These are meant for a more action style. I know that, but dang, just standing straight up and down on the shelf, that's gonna look good too. As the package says, the accessories are based on the masks of power, and here are the masks of power. Really nice sculpts. <laughs> Again, there's a simplicity to it, but that's the name of the game. There is a metallicness to the plastic used. Also, it's got head sockets to make it look like the characters have taken over other figures. I flashed this on screen a minute ago, but I didn't know he was coming with his own purple power sword, and <laughs> yes, I subconsciously flipped it over expecting a flatness, no detail here, and maybe a tab or a socket 
to plug it onto the gray sword. But nope, it has sculpt on both sides. That's pretty sweet. Then there is the Havoc Staff, which is my favorite villain weapon ever, really. Ball on the end, pretty simple in the middle, some scallops coming up to here, and then the head. Look at that. It seems a little large from what I remember, my brain picture of the Havoc Staff, but looking at some reference pictures, sometimes it was bigger up here. Once again, I wish there was an up and down hinge on a weapon wielding hand. Just all the right hands. It would have worked with Beastman's whip. It would have worked with the power sword. It would have worked with the Havoc Staff. Leave the left side to side. Make this one up and down. And everybody would be a lot happier. Here he is with the classic Skeletor, the Club Skull Skeletor, and then a mishmash of parts on the Masterverse Skeletor body. That's a Classics Harness and then a custom head I got off eBay. But like I said, a darker shade of yellow like this would have done wonders here. But then this lighter purple would look fantastic over here. What's weird here is that the new Cartoon Collection head is so much smaller than the Club Skull head. Well, this is the Laughing Head, so it's got some extra height to it, but still, well, besides the purple's not matching. Mm, there's no sign of anyone, much less an army. They're around here somewhere. And then Man at Arms was always a favorite of mine. In fact, now that I think about it, there was always He-Man and Skeletor. I love the leaders. Beast Man was my favorite villain, and Man at Arms was my favorite hero. So... <laughs> This series works out perfect for me, the ones I have already. Once again, the same base body, this time in green, which is totally appropriate, totally works. I love this shade they've used. Clean belt, furry underwear, no gauntlets like we saw with Skeletor, and then this does use Skeletor's boots. It looked like in the package it was a higher peak, but no, it is the same sculpt. It has the ridge around the top, and then the point in the front. Those are meant to be an armor piece this time around because you have the brown shoes sticking out of the bottom. The arm armor, the arm armor is also overlays. You have double straps on both of them, the uppers and the lowers. They are pretty secure. Out of the package, this was rotated around to the back, so you may have to reposition them every now and then, but this being up here and staying up here is kind of impressive because when it comes to shoulder armor, usually it likes to flop around and move around. But because it's on both sides of the bicep, it seems to be staying in place pretty good. It doesn't have any latches. It doesn't have any tabs. And it's the same for the torso armor too. In fact, it's got two plugs that are, can I, oh, okay, you can take them off if you want to. Did I just screw up? Am I ever, oh, okay, it does plug right back on, and I will probably never unplug that ever again. Because you gotta have Man-at-Arms breathing canister and his face shield. Here comes the bad guys. Psh, 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 boom, 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 boom. I'm just reflecting stuff off here. I guess I've never paid much attention to the blue of the belt matching the helmet. And just look at that. Usually we get a techno hat of some kind. This just has an orange streak on it and a ridge in the middle. That is perfect for what we're going for here. But more iconic than anything, ooh, that mustache. The skin tone. I have seen people say that it is pale. Looking at some reference, both him and Tila are really pale, especially compared to He-Man. That does not bother me. In fact, I had my little nitpicks, my little gripes with the rest of the figures in this wave so far, but man at arms, I don't really have anything to poke and prod about. I haven't done this with any of them. Oh, that is pretty easy to pop apart, but it's also secure when it's together. I guess the colors could be slightly more saturated, like I was talking about with Beast Man. <laughs> this seems like a nice balance between vintage figure and cartoon. That's the whole goal of me buying these, was to get that feeling. Duncan looks good. Looks really good. Here's the stasis ray. It's not as plain as the hover ray. This is just, you know, gray plastic. This has a metallicness to it. And again, some nice detail. It has everything it should have. Everything it needs. And then there's Man at Arms' mace. And I'm gonna be honest, I do not remember it looking like this. Was it that bulbous up at the top? Almost like a, just a big old man. I would love to have this extended out for some swinging action. Here's the same comparisons I've been doing the whole time. The classics, the Club Grayskull, the Masterverse. Here's the Club Grayskull stasis ray, and comparing the two, the new one has a thickness to it. I also like the plastic used. It's a bit more dynamic, a bit more exciting than this one. There's also this blast that came with the Club Grayskull, but I can't get it to stay up in there. All you have is the gap between the overlay and the arm, and 
There's just not enough meat there to hold on to it. A third party piece with a longer, flatter peg to shove further up in there would be awesome. I don't have a lot of Origins vehicles, but I do have this Sky Sled. That's where I got the Prince Adam. And putting the cartoon collection He-Man on here, he seems kind of big. On the other hand, I really, really like how Man-at-Arms looks in the Classics Wind Raider because it's a bigger scale. It just looks better. It doesn't become a two-seater like we saw in the cartoon, but look at all the wiggle room Duncan has. This may be the permanent home for this Dungeons and Dragons figure though. It's not as large as we saw in the episode, but it's a big beastie for Beast Man. May be a little too realistic for a cartoon style figure, but look at that. Doesn't that look majestic? I really, really like Skeletor on the classics Panthor, at least size-wise. That line had some realism to it, some extra sculpt, and you put a cartoon figure on the back, and they clash, they contrast. I've been kind of looking at the Origins Panther, at least in pictures, and it seems a little small for Origins themselves. With the cartoon collection line being slightly larger, I don't know how that'll look. It won't look as good as this. Everything I said about Skeletor on the back of the Classics Panther applies to He-Man on the back of the Classics Battle Cat. It looks great. It's just different styles. The Masterverse Battle Cat is even better in size, but it's almost too big. Getting He-Man's legs down around the saddle isn't the easiest thing to do. But if you want a big imposing Battle Cat, you're not gonna get bigger than this, unless you go Mondo. The Classics Cringer seems to work, I think. Again, extra sculpt, so not quite, but size-wise it does. Then the Origins Orco fits that filmation style, but not size-wise. It needs to be more the size of the Classics Orco. And Mattel's bubble glue struck here too. It didn't have a stand inside the package. It was just the bubble, the figure, and the backing. And that's all I got with the Origins Orco. But in the Masks of Power, his magic was blocked, remember? So he was running around on the ground, just So this kind of works. I did that on purpose. Totally. Again, these figures are not the easiest to sit down, so it only kind of works in the Bone Throne from Castle Grayskull, the Classics version. And then the table's a little large for the figures, but that just means I'll get to put more of them around it. That's not a bad thing. So at the end of the day, you just cannot help but sing Dun, 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 dun. These are an absolute love letter to the 80s Masters of the Universe. Plus, fun. You add that to the mix, and these are hard to beat at this price point. I will say that the Club Skull figures are a better representation of the filmation style, of what we saw on the screen. If you're just going for that look, you're gonna want, well, <laughs> I was gonna say spend the money, but it's gonna be a lot of money. If you're wanting to stay within budget, plus get some of that old school toy feel, these are perfect. There's so many layers to these. Fun. It keeps coming back around to fun. That's what these are. I'm also realizing I have a lot more Masters of the Universe figures than I thought I did. It's not until I get them out for comparisons and start looking for things that I'm like, how many tubs do I have? I like the main cast. I like different versions of them. But then every toy line gets to the characters that I'm not as familiar with. So I lose interest until the next iteration of a Masters of the Universe toy line comes along. And then there I am just, oh, give me more. I am no match for marketing, <laughs> especially when it comes to childhood nostalgia. It's been working on me for 40 years, if not more. I don't see any reason to stop now.